evening, sir and my fellow friends. We are Hong Xing Chen 277-937, Chai Han Wei 278-046, Kalaiwani, Anna Pumpuan, Nala Tambi 278-239, Tan Hawan 278-319, Hamida Binti Samsudin 278-505. From Mathematics Economics Semester A202 Group 7. So today we will present for Assignment 3. Assignment 3 is solving question from Topic 3 from the past year paper. Topic 3 is Comparative Static Analyst Continue. This topic is about to understanding partially differentiation, total differentiation, implicit function, and how to application in economic. The past year paper we choose is A191 question 1. Given the following open economic macroeconomy model assumed to approximate the working of an economic, where Y is income, C is consumption, I is investment, X is net export, E is exchange rate, R is interest rate, F net inflow of capital, G subscript 0 and M subscript 0 are respective ex exogenous government spending and money supply. First Roman, take the total differential of the reduced form equation and above. So first of all, we need to derivative whole equation. So it becomes del y minus c subscript y times del y minus i subscript r times del r minus x subscript e times del e equal to del g subscript zeros. So the second equation also L subscript Y times del Y plus L subscript R times del R equal to del M subscript zero. Therefore the last equation all the same. So it becomes X subscript E times del E plus F subscript R times del R equal to del zero. For this question, we need to rewrite our binding is i equation into matrix form, so x equal to b, and this is our binding in the question 1. So let's convert, convert it into a matrix form, z x equal to b, and this is j, is x, and this is b. And j is a square matrix of a coefficient, and all of the emission will pick in the right hand, right hand side of the equations. And this is x, x is a vector of integer variables, which is dy, dr, and de, and this is a vector of constant, and we pick in the right hand side of the equation which is dg subscript 0, dm subscript 0 and d0 and then this is 0 because of the second uh, second equations have no any variables for the de and this is 0 because of the third equation have no any variable for the dy so this is the matrix form for the for this finding thank you for this question we need to rewrite our finding is i equation into a matrix form so x equal to B, and this is our finding in the question 1. So let's convert, convert it into a matrix form Zx equal to B, and this is J, is X, and this is B. And J is a square matrix of a coefficient, and all of the emission will pick in the right hand, right hand side of the equations. And this is X, X is a vector of integer variables, which is dy, dr, and de. And this is a vector of constant, and we pick in the right hand side of the equation, which is dg subscript 0, dm subscript 0, and d0. And then this is zero because of the second uh, second equations have no any variables for the de, and this is zero because of the third equations have no any variable for the dy. So this is the matrix form for the for this finding. Thank you. My name is Kalevani Nalatambi. My metric number is two seven eight two three nine. So now I will talk about measure the effect on the equilibrium levels of y and r and E of N expressionary monetary policy, M subscript 0. Now, let DM subscript 0 not equal to 0, while DG subscript 0 equals to 0, and D0 equals to 0, as we are interested to see the effect on changes in M subscript 0 on the endogenous variables. It will be like this after change, which is bracket 0 DM subscript 0 and 0. Then, this allows us to adopt a proper notation to signify the application of the partial differentials concept as follows. Brackets 1 minus C subscript Y, L subscript Y, 0, negative I subscript R, L subscript R, S subscript R, 
negative x sub to e 0 x sub to e times the partial derivative of y with respect m0 the partial derivative of r with respect m0 and the partial derivative of e with respect m0 equals to 0 by delta m0 delta m0 by delta m0 and 0 by delta m0 the answer is bracket 0 1 0 after that we have to compute the determinant which Jacobian equals to 1 minus c sub three y times l sub three r times x sub three e minus l sub three y times f sub three r times x sub three e plus x sub three e times l sub three y times l sub three r less than zero. So that's all from me. Thank you. I pass to the next presenter. By Kramer rules, we can copy out the Jacobian y, Jacobian r, and Jacobian e. Jacobian y is equal to i sub three or r multiplied with x sub three or e. Minus f sub or r multiply with x sub or e. Jacobian r is equal to x sub or e multiply with open bracket 1 minus c sub or y close bracket. Jacobian e is equal to minus open bracket 1 minus c sub or y close bracket multiply with x sub or r. After that, we can get delta y per delta m sub or 0, delta r per delta m sub or 0, delta e per delta m sub or 0 is equal to Jacobian y per Jacobian, Jacobian r per Jacobian, and Jacobian e per Jacobian. Jacobian y is a negative value and Jacobian is a negative value. Negative per negative is positive, so it will be bigger than zero. And Jacobian r is a positive value. So positive per negative, we will get the negative value and it will be smaller than zero. And Jacobian e is a negative value. Negative per negative is a positive and we get the bigger than zero the value. So next is question number four. Comment on your finding in question number three above. So the answer is, an expansionary monetary policy results in an increase in income, a lowering of the interest rate, and the duplication of domestic currency respectively by I subscripts to R multiplied by X subscripts to E minus F subscripts to R multiplied by X subscripts to E divided by Jacobian. And then the second question is X subscripts to E multiplied by 1 minus uh, C subscripts to Y divided by Jacobian and Negative in bracket 1 minus C subscript to Y multiplied by F subscript to R divided by Jacobian. So in here we can see that uh, I represent investment, X represent next export, E represent exchange rate, R represent interest rate, F represent net inflow of capital, and CY represent consumption. So we have come to the end of our presentation. From the question above, we can conclude that the effect on the equilibrium level of Y, which is income and R, interest rate and E, exchange rate of an expenditure monetary policy M0 is increase in income and lowering of the interest rate and depreciation of domestic currency. So that's all for our presentation for today. Thank you.